You know, I'll tell you, I don't believe just to get up and preach a sermon. I have to wait on him and ask him to take my this whole body over and do what he wants me to do. And I feel this morning is, <clears throat> why is it so hard for Christians to pray? Amen. I've been complex for some time about a problem that has resisted in the church for years. And I have asked God on this. The problem is why it, well, the problem is why is it so hard for Christians to pray? Scripture makes it, it clear that the answer to everything in our lives is pray, prayer mixed with faith. Amen. As the pastor was talking this morning, why do we worry? Right. Worrying is sin, the Bible says it is. Could we worry because we don't have faith in God? and don't think he can do it for us. The Apostle Paul writes, Be careful for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let, uh, let your requests be made known unto God. Philippians 4 and 6. When you give it to God and let it known to God and you give it to Him, it's His. It's yours no longer. Amen. As my wife has said, that I believe what's going on in my family, I have given it over to God. It's His problem. And He straightened some of it up and He's going to straighten the rest of it up. His way. Right. Not my way. And let me tell you one thing I believe in giving it over to him. Paul is telling us, seek the Lord about every area in your life. Paul made it very clear, always pray first. We're not to pray as a last resort, going to our friends first. Amen. Then to the pastor or counselors, and finally, finally we end up on our knees. We might well end up on our knees first Amen. and talk to the great physician, Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. No? Jesus tells us, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Matthew 6, 33. Amen. We're to go to the Lord first before anyone. Very few Christians even mention prayer. They turn on a tape or a book, or counselors, therapy for all of all kinds, but rarely even to pray, ever to pray. They go through every, they go through each day worrying and fretting, living with a cloud hanging over their head. Because they don't have any, any answers to their problem. Why is it so hard for Christians in time of crisis to seek God for their needs? After all, the Bible stands as one long testimony that God hears the cries of his children and answers them with a tender love. The eyes of God, uh, the eyes of 
of God are upon the righteous, and his ear is open unto their cry. Psalm 34 and 15. The righteous cry, and the Lord hears and delivers them out of all their troubles. Psalm 34 and 17. This is the conference that he has in him that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. And if we know that he hears us, 1 John 5 and 14, for whatsoever we ask, we know that we have the petition that we desire of him. John, 1 John 5 and 15. The effective fever prayer of the righteous man availed as much. James 5 and 16. All things Whatsoever ye ask, whatsoever ye shall ask in prayer, believe me, ye shall receive. Matthew 21 and 22. The prayer of a, a prayer of uprighteous is his delight. Proverbs 15 and 8. He will regard the prayer. Of the, and not despite their prayers. Psalms 102.17 When it comes to prayer, the Bible gives us more than promises. It also gives us warnings about the danger of neglecting prayer. Yes, Hear what I'm saying this morning, church. We have to spend time before God. We go through things, and I believe a lot of times we go through things because we're not doing and praying and talking to the Master like we should be praying. As I have said in this church many times, I go to the problem solver. I want to tell you one thing. I cannot solve nobody's problems. Brother Gardner, you come to Brother Gardner, I've got to go to the problem solver and ask him what how to solve your problem, and I give it over to him. Let him do it. Hear what I'm saying, church? We have problems because we don't go to the problem solver daily. Churches today, things are going on in them. Why? Because Christians are doing things because they don't know the will of God. They don't know what He wants them to do and how He wants them to do it. How shall we escape if we neglect so great salvation? Hebrews 2 and 3. The Greek word for neglect here means a little concern to take lightly. The context of this verse is a dis of saying, discussing things related to our salvation and prayer is one of these. God is asking, how do you expect to escape ruin in dark times coming? Let me tell you one thing, if we don't know what we should do in the times coming, just look around and see how our country's in. Amen. The dark time is coming. Let me tell you, we've got to know what God wants us to do and how He wants us to do it. And I was waiting on the Lord uh, last night, uh, uh, I'm further swagger to having that youth convention and let me tell you, Donnie preached last night and he hit it on the head. He says, churches are letting things go on. Let me tell you that this country is going down. 
He was a saying, church, all we have to do is look at our government today and everything's okay. But it is not okay to the church, but half of the things is okay to the church because they're not on their knees before God. <coughs> Ask, <coughs> asking God how what he wants them to do. Right. Amen. <coughs> he was a saying, church, We've got to get on our knees and pray and ask God how did He want us to do and live in this uh, day and age we're living. We're living in a very dark and dark, dark time. <clears throat> if, if you haven't learned to communicate with me in prayer, how will you know? and recognize my voice in that day. If you haven't learned to hear it in your secret closets, God is deeply wounded by the neglect of prayer among his people today. Jeremiah writes, Can a maid forget and adorn of a bride, her retire. Yet my people have forgotten me day without numbers. Here is my big question. The one thing I simply cannot understand. How can God's own people who are under constant attack from hell face trouble and temptation on, on all sides, go week after week without seeking Him. How can they claim to love Him and believe in His promises, Amen. yet never draw near to Him, to His heart? The writer of Hebrews calls us to draw near to God. Hebrews 10 contains a credible promise. I say God's door is always open to us, giving us total access to the Father. Hebrews 10, 19, 22. Having therefore, brother, be bold and enter in into the holies by the blood of Jesus Christ, by the new and living way which he has uh, for us through the veil that is to say his, his flesh and having the high priest over the house of God let us draw near with the true heart in full insurance of faith, having our heart sprinkled from the evil content of our bodies, washed with pure water. A few verses later, we are warned the day of the Lord is coming. The day of the Lord is fast approaching. Let me tell you one thing. It's very soon that I believe that Jesus Christ is coming back after his church. But he's coming back after a church that knows his will. He's coming back after a church without spot, without wrinkle, without blemish. He's coming back after a praying church that knows what he wants from them. Amen. Hear what I'm saying, church? We have people all around here. We should be praying for them. We should know where God wants us to go. When we leave our house in the morning or whatever we do, we should say, God, open the door that you will put somebody in my way today that I can witness to, to bring them into the family of Almighty God. Hebrews 10 and 25, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as a matter of some is, of some is, but is ordering one another, and so much the more as we see 
that day approaching. What are you saying here? That we better start centering ourselves together. Let me tell you one thing, Christians today, and some of them don't want to even walk inside of a door of a church. They think they can do it at home. That is not what the Bible says. It says, in other words, what it's saying, right. do not to forsake the assembling of ourselves together in the manner of some, but is exhorting one another so much and more as they see that day approaching. Do they believe that Jesus is about to come and to make appearance? It don't seem it to me. The church is saying the people don't want to come into the church today. I believe that I'm going to put it this way. Back years ago when I was a little kid, I used to go to church. If the people go to church over a couple hours now on Sunday, that oh, that's really bad. Why? That's too long. Let me tell you, when I was a young child, I used to go to church at 9 o'clock in the morning. In other words, the morning service used to get out about 2 o'clock in the afternoon. You go back, in other words, at 7 o'clock at night. And I have seen sometimes I get home at 12.30 in the morning. That's the old time. God met and God moved and the people prayed and they knew what God wanted. What I'm saying this morning, we've got to turn back to the old ways. The new ways ain't getting it done. And it won't. You know what I'm saying, church? God is saying, even now, as the time of Christ returns, draws closer, we must seek His face. We must know his voice. We must know what he wants this church to do. We, uh, we don't own the church of God. He owns it. But I think, Pastor, we think we own it. And we can tell, and tell him how we're going to do it. But it's not that way. I've had people in the family say, well, this is the way I see it. I said, I don't care how you see it. I don't care how I see it. It's what this word says it is. That's what it is. It don't matter what we see or what we say. But this word tells us to go into our secret closet and talk to him daily. And a lot of us don't even have a secret closet no more. Amen. It's time to go into your secret closet and get to know me. I believe we're all, already seeing the signs that the crews were closing and routing down in our finance system. Amen. Yet even these same powerful warnings about the danger of neglecting prayer, Christians are still finding it hard to pray. Why? I believe there are four reasons for this. Some Christians don't pray because they have a lukewarm love for the Lord. <coughs> Revelation 3 5 and 15 and 6. I know thy works that thou neither cold nor hot. I would thou whether cold or hot. So then because thou art lukewarm and neither cold or hot, I will spew thee out of my mouth. He wants us to be hot on fire for him doing what He wants us to do, how He wants us to do it. Hear what I'm saying, church. He's saying, lukewarmness, I will spew you out of His mouth. And I want to say, I have said this before, you want to know what he, when you're lukewarm to God, what, he, what you taste like to Him, when you drink a cup of coffee and it's lukewarm. 
What do you do? Let me tell you, a lot of people spit it out of their mouth. If you're lukewarm to Jesus, the Bible says it. What's it saying? If you're not hot, he's going to spew you out of his mouth. In other words, he's not going to know who you are. Well, God, I'm supposed to be a Christian. Well, you don't act like it. I love him. Hallelujah. Amen. Revelations 2 and 4. Nevertheless, I have somewhat against thee, because I have left thy first love. A lot of Christians today would like to say, they say, I am a born again Christian. I have people in my own family. I don't go out to try to say other people's family. But you know who you have. I know they'll say, I'm a born again Christian and they have their chest out. And I said, I look to my eyeball to eyeball. I say, you're not a root boy. And they said, I am a born again Christian. And I tell them right to their face. I say, you're not a born again Christian. Because a born again Christian does not go and get have, go to and live with each other, not marry, having kids. Let me tell you, that is not a born again Christian. Here I tell you, because the Bible here, it says it and blocks against it. And a born again Christian lines up with this word of God. And there's a lot of people that's doing that. Born again Christian is a very loose thing today. Number two, some Christians don't pray because they prevent their Oh, their priorities is wrong. Put it right, right. Their priorities is wrong. Their priority is important. It is important you place on something. Christians who have that prayer has presented their priorities. Many believers plead. Believers pledge. They pray if if and when they can find time. How many heard, I will pray when I can find the time. Let me tell you, this book says Jesus Christ is going to be number one. Right. He's not number two and he won't take number two. Right. We should be praying for him every day of our life. The first thing in the morning before we even go out to, into that world, we should ask Him and let Him guide us and let Him lead us. That's what's wrong today. Why there's so many people on drugs and alcohol and doing all this thing because the church is not doing what it's supposed to be doing. Amen. Yet each week, Seek. Yet each week seeking Christ be becomes less important to them than washing their car, cleaning their house, visiting friends, eating out, going shopping, watching sports. Amen. Sim they simply don't make time to pray, but they have time to do all of that. Yet people were no different in the day of Noah and Lot. Their top priorities were eating and drinking, buying and selling, marrying and carrying uh, for their families. They had no time to listen to the message of God's coming judgment. And and so no one was prepared when the judgment fell. Let me tell you one thing what's going on in our government today when there's some of our congressmen is now cursing Israel and talking against Israel. Let me tell you this Bible says anyone against Israel is cursed. Let me tell you, and I know a, a senator looks her in the eye and says, you keep your mouth off of that and you're cursing. You're, you're cursing this country. 
Amen. Hear what I'm saying, church? We better be on our knees and knowing Amen. what God's going to do because He's about to do something because He's not going to take people going against Israel. Right. Never has. No, he never has and never will. <clears throat> Everything, nothing to change for the centuries. For most Americans, God remains at the bottom of their priority list. And at the top are income, security, pleasure, and family. Of course, for many Americans, God don't even make a, make the list. Well, I want to tell you that for many for many Christians, God don't make the list. But that doesn't bring God as near, nearly as much as how little He valued. A little he's valued by his own children. Today, thousands of Christians are traveling across the country just to be prayed over by some minister, prophet, or evangelist. <coughs> These believers want to feel God touch, touch and have something great experience in his presence. But even if they get what they are looking for, that experience only lasts a short time. The whole, the whole time they are traveling and seeking God's touch, they don't spend five minutes in prayer. God does not want your leftovers. So little bit and pieces of time when you have only a few moments to toss up a quick prayer request. That isn't sacrifice of prayer. It's a lame offering. The fact is, he wants our quality time. Amen. Time that not to be rushed or hurried. <clears throat> and there too to make the time a priority. I want to tell you today, many Christians do not even have a prayer closet. And that's one thing the Bible says we all should have. To go in and talk to Him and listen to Him and let Him tell us what He wants. You know, a lot of Christians who get down and say, Lord, we want this, 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 and this. Amen. But it's time that we tell the Lord, yeah, I'm here to listen to you and ask for you to tell me what you want. How do you want me to run my life? How do, where do you want me to go? Amen. Hear what I'm saying, church. Churches very seldom today have prayer. I want to tell you, when I was a kid, we had one night a week in the church that had prayer. And mostly everybody that called that church, their church, was there. And they prayed for all around them. Amen. Today it's very seldom seen in churches. Hear what I'm saying, church? And then we wonder why we're going through so much stuff. So many things are going through. I believe God is allowing us to go through them that he's trying to get us back on our knees and asking him, what do you want, God? What's your will in this church? And what do you want us to do and how do you want us to do it? <coughs> no Christian.
and will set aside time to pray unless it becomes his first priority in life. Above everything else, above family, career, leisure time, everything, Some Christians, the third minute, some Christians don't pray because they've learned to live without prayer. Church, I want to tell you one thing. <coughs> we let them go back to God. Mm -hmm. Turn back to the old way. The Bible says that. And ask Him. Lord, because I want to tell you something, Pastor, this church is not ours, it's His. It's His. Amen. He's the head. We've got to listen to what the head is saying. That's right. Amen. My cousin, Pastor Thomas McCarty, he said, I have to preach a sermon 20 times before that anybody gets it. 25%. But let me tell you one thing I know what God is talking to me about. We've got to turn back and go and get that, have that prayer closet in our home. We've got to get prayer meetings back in the churches. Amen. But if churches have prayer meetings today, the pastor and the two, three, four other people come, that's not the way it should be. And they have a prayer meeting in this church. Everybody calls us that a church should be here. Talking to God. True. Asking God who they want, who what he want them to do. How does he want him, them to bring people into the family of God? <coughs> I tell people. <coughs> I said, when you go out and test them and tell people about God, I said, you don't go out and tell them about do's and don'ts. I said, you go out and tell them what God has done for you. That's how you win souls go out. Tell them, tell them what God has done for us. You do tell them the do's and don'ts, you're going to scare them away. And if you go before God and pray the way we should, God's going to tell us how to do it. Mm -hmm. And He's going to fill the church. I believe with all of my heart that God is about to return. I look around and I, I mean, I, I watch the news and I look around and see what's going on. There are things that's going on in this country alone and over in that country over there. That's right. Man. God's got to do something. Right. And he's just the son, he's just waiting for the father to say go and bring our church home. Are we ready? Are we sure we're ready? Because he tells us what he's coming for. <coughs> he's coming for a church ready for him. And I believe with all of my heart the only reason God hasn't come so yet so far is church is not ready. Right. And we've got to get ready yeah. for His coming. Right. Dear Heavenly Father, I have done what you've asked me to do in this day. Father Almighty God, that we'll run to the altar and we'll open that Hold that cause of a prayer back in our home and talk to you and get the Lord and let you talk to us and tell us what you want and how you want it. Father, that we can win people into your kingdom, into your body. Father, today, Lord Almighty God, that you will lead us, guide us, and direct us, Father, speak to us loud and clear. We ask it in the name of Jesus Christ. 
giving you the honor and glory and the praise and exalting you and thanking you. In Jesus' name we ask it. Amen and amen. amen.